I'm glad you checked in with me today because we made a roast beef, mashed potato gravy, and corn dinner for you. And we did it all in less than an hour. And it will be exciting and excellent. So follow me right into my kitchen. I'm going to teach you how to do this so you can serve it as well. Come on, let's go. Good morning, it's Grandma Roseanne and we are going to make a full, full on roast beef dinner. Roast beef, gravy with pan drippings, mashed potatoes and corn. Delicious, one of my very favorites. And it's game day, so I'm making Go Chiefs Go, six and oh, Go Chiefs. But I'm making this really early because I want to have it all done and ready so we can enjoy the game and then have a great dinner afterwards. I understand that new cooks are a little bit afraid of a dinner like this, but you really shouldn't be. It is so super simple. It's almost fail proof. If you have a meat thermometer, it is a thousand percent fail proof. And it's delicious and it's very, very inexpensive to do a dinner like this. So I hope if you're a new cook, you won't be intimidated by the process, but you'll just lean into it because once you learn this, oh my goodness, you can make so many fabulous dinners for yourself or for friends or for your family. All right, now I'm starting out with about uh, one large onion and I'm just going to slice it like this. All right, now we've got that ready to go. And what I'm using here is a two and a half pound lean cross beef chuck shoulder cross. <laughs> like I think I could read that. Hold on. It is a choice beef chuck shoulder cross rib roast. That's a lot to say. Anyway. I have used this before. It is an excellent, excellent, excellent cut of meat. So we are going to use that. Now I'm going to season this, but I'm just going to season it with salt and pepper. I really don't want anything else on it. I think that is plenty of good seasoning for just a very basic roast. I have my oven uh, set at 350. And I'm going to sear this, so I probably have a tablespoon of oil in there. Hear that sizzle? That's what we're looking for. Now you want this, now you want this to get a really nice sear on it, so don't be messing with it. Just let it sit nicely. Can you see how beautiful that sear is right now? That's because I wasn't moving it around the pan. We're going to do the same to the other side and what that is doing is it's sealing all the juices in so that when we bake it the juices are not escaping as rapidly as they would my oven they're not escaping as rapidly as they would if we didn't sear it and that crust on the outside of the roast oh my goodness that's where your greatest flavor is Okay, we are really seared nicely on both sides of this, and typically I would sear the sides as well. I'm <laughs> just lazy today, I'm not doing that. Now what I have done is I have taken an onion and just cut it into slices like this, and it is going to flavor not just our meat, but it's going to flavor our gravy as well. And it's about, I think I have like one medium sized, maybe kind of large onion. Might be more large than medium. Now I have garlic here, and this would probably be maybe a couple of cloves of garlic. I'm just going to sprinkle that on the top of the meat. And it's going to go into a 350 degree oven. And probably I'll check it at like 30 minutes and see where the temperature is. We like it medium rare, so anywhere from 125 to 130 degrees is good for us. 
If you like it more done than that, then just cook it a little bit longer. But I'll give you the time on, on a roast like this. And we have other stuff that we're going to do while our, our roast is cooking. And already it smells delicious. Now, while our roast was searing, I peeled five, um, I think just average sized potatoes. Here I have a pot of water that I'm going to put on the stove. And I want to show you this pot in case you're looking for something that's really convenient. I bought this at Walmart. It was so inexpensive. I think maybe like $20. It was very inexpensive. But what I love is that it has this inside of it. So if you're doing something like potatoes, like I'm doing now, corn on the cob, vegetables, whatever it is, you fill your water, you put this in, you obviously cook it, and then when you're ready, you just lift it, and it automatically drains everything out. I love this pot. I actually bought one for my daughter-in-law too because I loved it so much. Okay. Now, I don't want these very small, so I'm going to cut these in about half. I'm going to mash these so I don't want them just disintegrating in the pot. Okay, my potatoes are ready. I'm going to add some salt to the water. I don't know how much, just, just that much. And I'm going to bring this up to a rolling boil. This also has a lid, which is very nice. But I'm gonna bring it up to a rolling boil and then I'm going to put my potatoes in. I'm gonna do this over on the stove top. If you haven't watched my video on how to process garlic, you might wanna take a look at that because I believe the easier you can make your process um, flow in the kitchen, the more I don't know, maybe encouraged and excited you are about going in to do some cooking. So I have so many things like this that I have already pre-done. When I get to that point in my recipe, I pull it out. I don't have to go get a bulb, separate it, smash it, crush it, puree it, whatever you have to do to it. I just pull it out of my refrigerator and this freezes very, very well too. I did uh, four pounds of garlic in my video. You don't have to do four pounds. Trust me. Well, the roast is done. It took about 25 minutes and we like it medium rare. So I just stuck my handy little, if you don't have one of these, come on you guys, they're like 10 bucks. And it just, anything, pork, chicken, beef, fish, it makes you an excellent cook. So I just checked it. I wanted to see where we were. We are exactly at 125 and that's what we like. So what I'm going to do now is just move this roast out and it's going to rest. Now, tell me that doesn't look fabulous. Now, what do we do with all of these beautiful drippings in here and these onions? Oh, let's just throw them away. <laughs> no. No, we are going to make outstanding gravy. I will also tell you, when I was a young cook, this was the hardest thing for me to do. So I'm going to give you some really good instructions, all right? One minute, we need a product. And I have started using Better Than Bouillon. This is a, it is a superior product. You can use Nor, which I used for many, many years. It's a granulated uh, bouillon. It's very good. Um, you can use probably any other bouillon that you like, but I have found this is just about the most excellent product I've ever bought. Now, it comes in beef, chicken, vegetable. It's all garlic. It's got all kinds of flavors in it. It's one teaspoon. It's very concentrated. So it's one teaspoon to one cup of water. And what I like to do is just put a little bit in there first because I think it's just easier to mix it all in when you don't have a full cup in there. So I just kind of get that incorporated. 
I love this product, you guys. I really do. What's nice, too, is that we're going into fall. We're actually getting very close to Thanksgiving here. So Costco has this on sale, and I stock up. Oh, my goodness. I stock up for the year. I buy several of these. Now I'm going to get the rest of the water in here so I have a full cup. Now in another uh, little glass here, I have one tablespoon of flour, and I'm going to just add, I don't know, maybe a half a cup of water to it. This is your thickening agent for your gravy. Now then, what you want to do is you want to kick this up to high. So I will get this to a high heat again, and then I will show you our process. Okay, we're at a high heat here. <clears throat> you want to scrape all the fawn from the bottom. Now I want you to see how thick this has become with just that little bit of flour that we put in, okay? So now we're going to start incorporating some of the flavor in here. You'll notice I haven't seasoned this yet because bouillon uh, always has a good amount of sodium. So you want to not have it over salted. So I let this kind of do its thing. And then I decide if I need more salt or pepper in it. Okay, it's thickening up very nicely, but I think I need a little bit more flour in here. So always watch your food and make your judgment and adjustments as you go along. Okay, now this is a nice thick gravy here. I put in about another half tablespoon of uh, flour and just enough water just to mix it up. It's good, but it needs a little bit more salt and pepper. That's delicious. Now you always want to incorporate your drippings into that. You don't want to waste those drippings. They, those are delicious. That's where your flavor lies. Well, our roast is done, our gravy is done, our potatoes are cooked, and I'm going to mash them right now and I'll show you how to do that. I strained them in my sink. How simple is that? And I have my mixer ready to go. So I'm just gonna dump my potatoes in. And you guys, it's easier if you wash this out right now rather than letting it get all crusty and dry and it's scrubbing. Now it just washes out so quickly. So give me a second. Now I will tell you, I never measure. <laughs> so I'm trying to measure to give you kind of a guideline. So five potatoes. I'm putting in like a half a cup of butter and I've got a cup of milk here, but I'm only going to start out with like maybe a third. Now let's taste it. No, we can't taste it yet. We need to put the seasoning in. So salt, pepper to taste. And just by looking at my potatoes, I don't think they're creamy enough. So I'm going to put in a little bit more. That's probably a half a cup total that I have in there. Now they look really creamy. But let's see how we are for seasoning and for the butter flavor in them.
more butter. I'm gonna put a whole cube in. What, you say a whole cube? Yeah, yeah, I make good potatoes. You don't have to put that much in. But if you want to be famous for your mashed potatoes, put the whole cube in. <laughs> more salt, more pepper. Taste your food. delicious uh, now if you don't want to put that much butter in don't but if you're someone like me I would give up dessert willingly I will give up dessert just to have potatoes this good okay so if you are an either-or person make your choice but just understand you could be famous for your potatoes all right on to the corn I moved the potatoes over there, but you didn't see that I took two more spoonfuls of them. Oh, they are really good. While well, I'm still on the topic of potatoes, at this stage when you're um, uh, mashing them, you have so many options. If you'd like to put in some roasted garlic, it is amazing. You can put chives, you can put other herbs, you can put cheese, you can put sour cream, you can put all of it in and then it tastes like a, uh, a double baked potato. But I'm, I'm kind of a purist when it comes to potatoes. I just like it just the way we made it just now. But truly, all of the additions that you can put in are pretty fabulous. Now our, now our beef has rested, so we can go ahead and cook that. And even that little bit of dripping, I'm not throwing that away. Trust me, that's going right into our gravy. All right. Now we are going to cut our meat. Oh, it's just beautiful, you guys. Can you see that? And that's at the outside of it. Let's just take a little bit of a taste here. Oh, it's really flavorful. It's really good. Now, I will caution you. You may get a roast that's tough. Oh, my word, I've done it. It's so frustrating. You know you cooked it properly, but for whatever reason, it's tough. What you do then is you slice it very, very, very thin. And when you do that, you're able to easily eat that roast. So the better the roast, the thicker the cut. As we're getting to the center here, I'm going to show you the beautiful medium rare that we have created. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Now we can plate it beautifully. Oh my goodness, you guys. That medium rare is just exquisite. I'm coming closer, I want you to see this. Look at how beautiful that is. And if I pull out a centerpiece, look at how gorgeous that has, has cooked to a medium rare. It is beautiful. I'm very excited about this. I'm excited about this for you because I have done this thousands of times. But if this is your very first at a full, complete uh, roast beef dinner, you're going to be very happy. Now for your corn, I brought a pan of water up to a, a rolling boil. Use whatever corn you choose, uh, fresh, frozen, whatever. Right now I'm using frozen. I went to our grocery store, they didn't have any corn on the cob, so I opted for uh, frozen, which I prefer over a canned corn. I add just a tiny bit of salt, and then I just let this cook. It's gonna cook in just three minutes. 
Now in my bowl, I have just put a pat of butter in there. I'm going to add our corn. Mix it up so it all gets a little bit of that butter flavor. I will season it with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And that's all we need. Here we are, you guys. It's our finished product. We have beautiful roast beef just cooked to perfection, mashed potatoes and gravy, which is to die for, and a frozen corn that is absolutely excellent. I'm very, very surprised because I generally don't buy frozen vegetables, but this is so good. All right, what do you think? Do we deserve a taste? I believe we do. So juicy, so flavorful, perfect. My all time favorite, mashed potatoes and gravy. That is a gift from the gods. And buttered corn. This is an exceptional dinner, you guys. We did it in under an hour. So join me in having a fabulous roast beef dinner. Let me know if you do, let me know how it comes out. If you have any other suggestions, I am so open. I will leave, I will leave ingredients below, but <laughs> really nothing more than salt and pepper and butter, but there's more for the gravy. So I will leave the uh, ingredients below. Please subscribe. Please hit the like button. Please come back anytime you want to come back. And uh, please cheer for the uh, Chiefs, okay? They're playing today. Bye. Ingredients below. Hit the bell. Bye. Oh my goodness. Camera kept rolling.